Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to bring in a pick and an odd. So that's our bitmap or picture image and some sound. Of course, you can do this in Adobe Animate just by putting it into the, um, into the IDE, and that's fine, but we did get a question on YouTube as to how to do that or if that works with Adobe Animate. So let's just quickly show you. It's a nice, fast one. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And this is where you would find out how to use Zim, the JavaScript Canvas framework with Adobe Animate. Under the code section here, uh, if you scroll down to the features, one of the features is Zim Shim. And there's tutorials, so you should check out the earlier tutorials on this if you haven't um, used Zim inside of Animate. Shows you how to do it. Basically, you get a zip file and you can load in a template. And all that is explained in the earlier tutorials. So let's go out to uh, Adobe Animate now. And we'll go to our last, well, you know, why don't we just start a new one? Um, create new. And this time we're going to choose boop, 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 a very high uh, canvas uh, one right here and create. Or I think we had that under another section as well. So here we are, we've set the frame rate to 60 frames per second and we've got a 1024 by 768. Not that it matters, you can choose any settings you want, but this was uh, the way we did it. And then a reminder that we could bring in through more settings here, we could bring in with the HTML, import new and import the Zim shim from the zip file. Uh, what we've done though is we have, well, I'll go to the same place, I guess. We have under here a one that we can import. So import profile. And that was one that we had exported previously that not only, uh, okay, uh, not only does it import our HTML Zim Shim for us, but it also sets up the center of the stage, responsive and scale. So those three settings, and that's basically it. And then we hit okay. So now when we publish, we will see something like this. Oh, we haven't saved it yet. So let's, um, that's in an untitled place. So let's save it first. File, save as, and we will call this one, well, after the loader, we will call this one, uh, zim underscore zero nine underscore assets, I guess. Uh, we call sound and images and uh, video and so forth assets. So uh, when we go control enter, we will see uh, this uh, screen. And what we wanna do is get an image to show up in here by using zim uh, pick, a new pick. And we ask for a new pick. And when we, I don't know, when we drag it around and drop it, we'll make a new sound. And I've prepared some sounds for us. So they're over here. Uh, let's have a look. So this is the tutorials directory and we just made assets, um, the assets HTML page there. Okay, and there's the assets FLA. And so that's what we get when we output. Uh, note that here in the same directory as our, uh, as our HTML page or, and our FLA, we have an assets folder and in there we have an image. Uh, there's an image and a sound, okay? So abstract.png and warble.mp3 inside of an assets folder. So in here, we open up an F9, the, the command console here, make that a little bit bigger. And we will say that we are in Zim. Uh, this is 09 and it was assets, assets. Uh, in this case, it's uh, an image and sound, but there are other types of assets too. These are the most common. So to get an asset, we go new pick like that, we put the name of the asset and that would be with the path. So assets slash, uh, what was it? Abstract.png. And we can dot center that. Ah, I can do it and we'll dot drag it as well. <laughs> I don't know where that star is coming from. Okay, so we go control enter and now we have an asset that is centered and we can drag it on, on the screen there. Cool, huh? Um, if we want to play a sound, then it's very similar. You're not allowed to play sounds until the app is interacted with. 
uh, which is fine. We can do it, say, when we mouse up. So why don't we make an event or a, a variable here? Const pick is equal to that. We can make the sound ahead of time because if we're going to every time we mouse up on it, if we're going to play the sound, it would be best to make the sound first and then just play the sound every time we mouse up rather than making a new sound every time we go. So let's go const sound is equal to a new odd for audio and it's the same thing here. Because it's the same thing here and it might be the same thing throughout, we can set a path right here. Zim has a global uh, constant there or variable called path, at which point we can put assets in here like so with the slash on it. Then we don't need to put it put it here. Often we hold all of our things in some assets folder and we can just set that path at the beginning. When we're not using Adobe Animate, we usually preload the assets in through the frame. And at that point, we can specify the path as a parameter as well. And so it's something similar, or we could do it this way. All right, then inside of here would be, what was it? Warble.mp3, I think it was. Uh, so we don't play this just yet. All we're doing is making a sound object from it. And then what we can do is we can say pick.on. Uh, press up, call this arrow function. And inside the arrow function, we can say sound.play, like so. And we go control enter, and let's have a look. I think you'll be able to hear the sound too. Oh yeah, what do you think? That is a warble. It would be nice though if if there was an animation when we dropped that that matched the warble sound, wouldn't you think? But uh, as you can see, that's pretty easy. We can make an audio file and we can play it. Um, based on this playing, sometimes you want to do things like find out when the sound is complete. Uh, you would store this in a variable and then that variable dot on complete and that would be the complete for that. Uh, you can also adjust the volume afterwards with it or do a variety of things. But here you can also adjust the volume and actually in here you can adjust the volume and things like the pan uh, and a bunch of other things. So there's lots of things that you can do with odd and pick. You might want to read about those back on the Zim site here under the docs. Uh, they're down right here. Odd is right here and it tells us the parameters. Okay. And then uh, there's vid, and then here's pick right here, along with the parameters and some information as well. We are currently doing what's called lazy loading, which means uh, we're, it'll do preloading in the background for us. That has some ramifications. If you want to pass a pick into a sprite, for instance, you need to load assets first. That's a slightly different way. It looks like this F for the frame, because well, let's just put this in here. Uh, we are given F for the frame, S for the stage, width for the stage width, and height for the stage height. So uh, those are all variables that were given when we use the Zim Shim. So F dot load assets. So this is a way that we can load assets. Uh, by preloading them and then if we say something like const loading equals then it would be loading dot on complete uh, complete and we would call a function called init or whatever you know a big function that runs your whole thing or just an arrow function in here or whatever and that's where we would put all of our code so we could load these, preload these assets inside of here along with the path and then put all of our code inside of there, which would mean that they're preloaded and we know that they're around. So then there's no problems at all. So usually we do preload often through the frame, the Zim frame, but here in animate, um, since animate is in a sense setting up the frame for us, um, we would have to do it with the, the frame.load assets if we wanted to preload. And inside here we would put uh, an array of assets as well as the path and any other parameters that we want for, for loading assets. Okay, but let's, um, let's not worry about that because as you, as you see, it works uh, quite well as well with lazy loading. This is lady, lazy loading, <laughs> lady loading, lazy loading without 
uh, preloading. It, it, in other words, each time we call it, it will preload it and then use it when once it's loaded, it actually then recalls the center and the drag on it, which is okay. All right, um, what we're gonna do? Oh yeah, let's make a little animation though, huh? Does that sound good? So when we uh, when we drop it right here, so this is pick dot on press up, we can say pick dot animate, and inside here we will um, uh, let's see how about we will set the props to scale. So we'll scale it up and down a little bit. Uh, I don't know, 1.5 perhaps. And we could rotate it as well. Rotation colon, maybe 180, just half halfway around. Because we're gonna we're gonna rewind this as well. So rewind colon true. Um, this is a start. It won't look all that great, but shall we take a look? So there she be, and we drop it. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> For a couple of reasons. One is the picture when it comes in is not center edged, even though it's a round picture. It, uh, pictures are have the registration point at the top left corner. So we'll want to center reg that. That's how you handle that. That'll be better already. Uh, we've got some problem with time. Well, let, let's have a look at it again and we, we can play around. Okay, a little bit. Uh, slow moving. Um, so there's uh, one thing we can do is apply an elastic. An elastic will help. Uh, obviously, we can decrease the time on this too. That would have worked. Time colon point, well, at least 0.5, maybe even less. Uh, but if we do 0.5, then here's what it looks like. A little bit better, huh? A little bit better, but still not kind of as not kind of as elasticy as that sound, like wah 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 wah, that warble sound. So let's put a, a um, an ease, but uh, if we put an ease of an elastic, it's going to elastic at the beginning and elastic at the end, and it won't quite look good. So you can separate out to two different eases. We'll just use the default ease here, but then we can say a rewind ease like this, um, is uh, elastic out. So only on the out of the of the rewind do we want that to happen. And then we get something that looks like this, which probably will look a little bit better. Oh, an error. We need a comma there. We get something that looks like this. OK. No. I see it happening, but what's happening is our time of 0.5 is too short for a rewind. So what we can do is say a time of that, and let's put this just up above, not that it matters too much. But this is the, uh, this will be the first time then, comma, and then we can apply a rewind time too. Re, uh, caps lock, uh, rewind time. So this is a different time for the rewind and we can set that something bigger like 1.5 or two even. And now let's have a look. This should look quite good. It's taking too long to get bigger, isn't it? And also, did you catch that? If we are interrupting the, um, the ease, a rewind will automatically finish and it won't restart again if you've interrupted it. So there's ways to handle that. Uh, probably the best way is just to not even let people drag it as it's, as it's already animating, to let it sort of finish its thing. There's a few ways we could handle it, but one way is to say pick right here dot on. Oh, sorry, uh, pick dot no mouse. So this this just turns the mouse um, false. So as soon as we press up, we're not going to be able to press on it again until we're done, call, colon, this arrow function. So when we, um, uh, when we do a call or when the animations are finished, both the, uh, when it rewinds as well, um, then it gets a call. There is a rewind call that's only that gets called as it's just about to rewind. But anyway, this is a call at the end of it. And in this call, we can set it back again. Pick dot mouse. So that's how that's done. Uh, take away the mouse, which means we can't interact with it and give it back again. That's really setting uh, mouse children false and mouse enabled false.
inside. I think that's what that's, yeah, that's what they're, most enabled faults on it, most children false. So those two things are tricky to know about. They're wonderful for interactive media, but a lot of people don't really understand them or even know about them. So we made it a bit simpler just saying, hey, no mouse and mouse. Um, there we go. We could probably put this on one line if we want. Do you think we can handle that? Sure. The other thing we were wanting to do is make this shorter so it'll get bigger in, uh, I don't know, point, yeah, so we'll try 0.2 seconds. Then as it's rewinding, it takes that elastic out. The other option that we could have done is just said, hey, set the scale, set the scale, ska, uh, I can do it, to point, um, or 1.5 right here, dot animate. So you see that we're setting the scale to 1.5. Then we don't even bother rewinding and we just animate back to a scale of one with the, um, the ease. And that would probably do, but you're gonna see a jump going to 1.5. So uh, here we don't see a jump, we see a smooth animation, very short animation up, and then we spend longer rewinding. Okay, let's have a go. Could have also made just two animations. Ready? Woo! That looks good. And you see, I can't pick that up until it's finished rewinding. So super, if, if that's what you want. I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, so in uh, in this one, we have seen how we can bring in a pick and we can um, uh, do do that. One second, just a sec. Just a sec, dear. Um, so that is how we can bring in a pick, how we can bring in an odd. And then we saw a little bit of extra animation right on the end there. How's that, huh? Um, and ladies and gentlemen, this has been a uh, tutorials here, uh, Zim tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. You're welcome to come join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd uh, love to see you there. Have a good day or night. Cheers.